Stereographic projection is an important tool for representing relationships between planes and directions in a crystal. It's a conformal mapping, which means it's an angle preserving projection. If I have two directions, then by looking at the projection of those directions, I can find the angle between the directions. This is not always true. For example, a orthographic projection is a familiar counter example. So here I have a horizontal plane in which I wish to project directions lying in this vertical plane. So I have a direction OM and another direction ON in the same vertical plane at an angle phi to OM. If I project OM, I get the projection OP. So OM projects in the line OP. Since ON is in the same vertical plane, ON will also project along the same line. Thus, looking at the projections of OM and ON, I do not have any information regarding the angle phi between them. The angular relationship is lost in the projection and orthographic projection is not a conformal mapping. The stereographic projection preserves such angular relationships. In a stereographic projection, we project directions and planes. We do not project points. Directions project as points called poles and planes project as circles called great circles. Only orientations of the directions and planes are important not their positions. So all parallel directions will project in the same pole and all parallel planes will project in the same great circle. Let us look at how the stereographic projection of a direction is constructed. So OP is the direction of the interest. It is drawn from an origin O. I let the plane of projection pass through that origin and I also introduce a sphere of a given radius r, any arbitrary radius can be selected, a sphere of that radius which is known as reference sphere or a sphere of projection. This sphere obviously will intersect the projection plane in a circle that is called primitive circle. The direction will also intersect the sphere at some point P prime. We call that point as a spherical projection of the direction OP. Now I introduce an axis perpendicular to the projection plane which intersects the sphere at N and S known as north and south poles. Any of these poles can be used to convert the spherical projection on the sphere to a stereographic projection on the plane. Let us choose the south pole S as our projection point. So I join S to P prime. This line intersects the projection plane at PS. PS is the stereographic projection of the direction OP. So the direction OP in three dimension gives us a spherical projection P prime on the sphere and finally comes to the projection plane as PS, the stereographic projection. What will happen if the direction is not going up in the northern hemisphere, instead it's going down in the southern hemisphere? A direction like OQ. So since it's going down in the southern hemisphere, it will intersect the sphere at Q prime. So its spherical projection also will be in the southern hemisphere. Thus one can see that if I join S to Q prime, I'll get the stereographic projection QS lying outside the primitive. Technically or mathematically, this is not an issue. But conventionally, one wants to avoid projections outside the primitive. If we wish to do that, there are two methods. Either we can switch from projection pole as S to projection pole as N. 
and we can project the same direction using the north pole as my projecting pole. If I do that, then the stereographic projection Qn comes inside the primitive circle. Of course, if we have projections from both the poles in the same stereogram, then we should have some scheme to distinguish between which points are projected from which pole. So for example, one can use filled circle for projection from south pole and open circle for projection from north pole. Another method to achieve, um, achieve this is to use the direction OQ prime, which is opposite of the direction OQ. Now, if OQ is in the southern hemisphere, OQ prime obviously will be in the northern hemisphere. And if I project OQ prime, I'll get the projection, a stereographic projection QS prime, which is lying inside the stereogram, inside the primitive circle. Now, let us look at a horizontal direction. So, I have a horizontal direction OR. You can see that it hits the primitive circle, it hits the reference sphere at the primitive circle at RS. This when I join S to RS, I do not get any new point, I get RS itself. So both the spherical projection and the stereographic projection of a horizontal direction coincide and that is a point on the primitive. Thus every horizontal direction is represented by a point on the primitive and every point of the primitive represents a horizontal direction. Now let us look at the vertical direction. So ON is a vertical direction. So its spherical projection is the north pole itself. And if I join that with S, that line will intersect the projection plane at the center of the primitive. So center of the primitive is the stereographic projection of a vertical direction ON. So let us summarize our results for the directions. The center of the primitive is the projection of a vertical direction. Any point on the primitive is projection of a horizontal direction. A point inside primitive is projection of an inclined direction in the northern hemisphere. And a point Q outside the primitive is projection of a direction lying in the southern hemisphere. And this can be avoided either by using the north pole as the projection pole or by using the opposite direction. Let us now establish an important relationship for distance of a pole from the center of the primitive circle. We have a vertical section passing through the direction of interest. Is the OP is the direction of the interest. NS is the north-south axis. So I take the section of the reference sphere containing NS and OP. In this section, OP is seen with its true angle theta with NS. Now, LM, the projection plane, is seen as a trace LM, which is another diameter of the circle perpendicular to NS. If I join S to P, I get the stereographic projection of OP. So the question now is, what is this distance OPS? Now, we see that NOP and NSP both are angles subtended by same arc, one at the center and another at the circumference. And we have an interesting theorem from geometry which says that angle at the circumference is half the angle at the center from the same arc. So angle NSP is half of angle NOP. So NSP is theta by 2. Now in the triangle OSPS we see that OPS by OS is tan theta by 2. But OS is the radius of the reference sphere, is also the radius of uh, the primitive circle, 
so that is equal to r so ops is r tan theta by 2 a very interesting simple result let us now look at stereographic projection of planes so if i have a plane i let the plane pass through the origin of my sphere the center of the sphere then the plane will intersect the sphere in a circle this circle will be called the spherical projection of the plane now just like we projected a point on the sphere using the projection point s we can project all the points of this circle all the points of this circle using the projection point s so let us take an example if i project this point i project it here similarly i can project other points if i do that i'll get a curve in the projection plane that curve is the stereographic projection of the plane what is the nature of this curve what kind of curve is this is it a circle an ellipse a parabola or some other arbitrary and more complicated curve this is where a beautiful theorem of stereographic projection helps us a circle on the sphere will always project as a circle on the stereogram of course this needs a proof but that that is work of another video here we just take this theorem as true so this curve this curve which is representing the plane in in the projection plane is also a circle and this is called a great circle that's why planes are represented by great circle and this will be passing through two diametrically opposite points of the primitive now let us see if we what will happen if we have a vertical plane let us now consider a vertical plane passing through the north south axis all the projecting lines now lie in this vertical plane thus the stereographic projection of the vertical plane is nothing but the intersection of the plane with the projection plane it is a diameter of the primitive this is not a contradiction to the theorem stated above the straight line is just limiting circle of an infinite radius let us now consider the horizontal plane the plane of projection itself now the spherical and stereographic projection both merge in the same primitive circle because the spherical projection obviously is the primitive circle and if we join it with s we get no new point we get that same primitive circle so the stereographic projection of the horizontal plane is the primitive circle itself let us now summarize the projection of planes so the primitive circle itself is projection of the projection plane or projection of the horizontal plane a vertical plane projects as a diameter and an inclined plane projects as a great circle passing through two diametrically opposite points and conventionally we wish to represent only contents inside the primitive and do not draw the lines remaining outside the primitive thank you very much